Ave Maria Purissima. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Of course, uh, in this parable of the virgins, the oil, we're speaking of the, the, the state of grace. We have to be prepared at an hour we know not. We'll be called to a judgment. And so we always want to be ready to meet the Lord with, uh, in the state of grace. St. Gertrude the Great, and it mentions in the, uh, in the collect about the mansion, she's uh, one of the great saints of the Sacred Heart, a 13th century German, Benedictine. She was taken to the monastery, I think, when she's uh, about uh, five years old, so she's an oblate. And of course, the Benedictine oblate, the idea comes from bringing a child there as an offering to be raised up. Because in a society where salvation was one of the prim primary concerns, uh, that would be a very good thing to do. I mean, nowadays people wouldn't be shocked if someone opened a bank account for their five-year-old or got some certificate of deposit or something because we tend to think in economic terms, things that really don't matter that much in the light of eternity. And, uh, but their society, certainly in the 13th century, was informed by Christ and not, uh, not dollar bills in the same way. At any rate, her, uh, she's being raised up there, and uh, her formator and, and, uh, and uh, spiritual companion, St. Matilda. St. Matilda is the one where we get the three Hail Marys. Our Lady appeared to her and, uh, and gave her this devotion of three Hail Marys. But St. Matilda is her formator. And St. Gertrude the Great, when she's about 25 years old, had a mystical experience. She's reading something, and she has a, a, an apparition of our Lord, I believe, of the Holy Face. At any rate, it really encouraged her to, uh, to really work on her interior life. And in the call, it talks about the mansion. It says there's different mansions in the interior life. Just really briefly, since this is a fervorino, the interior life, or the spiritual life, is analogous to the physical life. Every one of us, if we have a, a normal life and live to maturity, you know, you have childhood, then you have uh, a crisis where it's puberty and you go into adolescence or young adult, you have another crisis with this first freedom and you become an adult. And if you negotiate those, you'll be normal. A uh, society like ours is set up so you'll crash at the first one with all the different horrible things that are available on the internet. And then at the second one, at the first freedom, when you go out there with all the other things, even if a parent has protected their children, uh, there's all these snares waiting for them. But if a person negotiates that, they'll have normal adulthood. In interior life, it's sometimes called the mansions or the stages, but a person would progress from spiritual childhood, which is basically trying to conquer the vices. If they're faithful to that in their prayer life, there'll be a crisis. It's called the dark night of the senses. They, if they negotiate that, there'll be a spiritual adolescent or young adult, and that, that would be the illuminative way, the kind of prayer changes. They're, they're, then they work on virtues at that point in time. This is very simplified. And then if they're faithful to that, there's another crisis, and it's the dark night of the soul, or the dark night of the spirit, and they become, they, they go, they become, they go into the unitive way. And uh, she's in the unitive way, and so she's in what was called the spiritual espousal, whatever. In the unitive way, the word tells us something about it, because Christ, their, their soul is so purified, they're, they're, they're so far advanced in spiritual life, they've gone, she's in the seventh mansion, and uh, so it's the spiritual espousals, because even that it admits of degree. So our Lord, there's such a, a sympathy, there's such a, a, a correlation between the soul and our Lord at that time, that in many ways, it's almost as if our Lord is living in here, but not completely yet, and she had the spiritual marriage then. And in a mystical vision, our Lord asked her to give, him, give her his hand, and her hand, and he gave, she gave her hand, and he put seven rings on her for I, I, probably the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. I'm not, I don't remember that part or know that part. When she came back, she could see these rings, but it was significant of what had happened right then because she be, became mystically espoused. It's called the mystical espousals or whatever. It's also called the transforming union because at that point in time, St. Gertrude the Great could say the same thing that St. Paul said Now I live, but not I, Christ lives in me. So there's a unity in that sense between the soul and Christ our Lord. St. John of the Cross says, at that time they're confirmed in grace. He's a really, really great saint. It's basically, she's just completely responding to everything that our Lord wants. So it, she didn't lose her personality, but she's been, in a certain sense, fused in not some mystical Eastern way, 
but in a proper Catholic way in our Lord. So she really is living fully the grace for baptism. This is just a little bit about the spiritual life of St. Gertrude the Great. But everything I said here, we should be aspiring for. Why are we Catholic? Why do we get baptized? What do we promise in our baptismal promises and our confirmation? We reject Satan with all his works and all his promises. We want to follow Christ. We want to become Christified. We want that life of sanctifying grace to take over in us. That's what we've been put in the world to do. And we can do it in this world. Because somebody like St. Gertrude the Great that's been serious about it, she doesn't go to purgatory, dies and goes straight to heaven. Every single person in here can do this too. Not necessarily get to the mystical espousal, I don't mean that, but do that. You can do your purgatory here. You can become holy here. That's the will of God for you. That's why you're baptized. And you still believe in a time when almost no one does. One of the best ways to help you keep on this path, get on this path, and encourage you on this path is read the lives of the saints. Because as you do it, you'll realize, wow, I can do this, I can do that. They'll encourage you. There are big brothers and sisters, and they'll help us get there. Today, pray to St. Gertrude the Great, that she obtains through the grace to have a burning desire to become a saint and a very great saint.